to Life on the Mendo Coast. My name is Amy Allen. Here on the Mendocino Coast live extraordinary people with unique talents and inspiring stories. Join us as we feature these individuals and learn of their journey to the coast, as well as their unique abilities. Hi, welcome to Life on the Mendo Coast. My name is Amy Allen. Today on our show, we have the iconic photographer of Fort Bragg, Larry Wagner. Larry, thank you so much for joining our show today. It's a pleasure. So, recently, I read an article that was talking about how you have been all around the world. But how did you come to Fort Bragg? It was an easy choice. Marilyn's parents started the botanical gardens, and we used to come out and visit them all the time. And uh, we said, you know, this is a really nice place to live. I wonder how you do that. Well, we concluded you better earn your money first. <laughs> And we were in New York City when Marilyn's parents passed away and they left us the house. So Marilyn said to me, all right, what are we going to do with that house? And I said, you know what, let's get the heck out of New York City. And we came out here in 1992? 93. 1993. We came out here in 1993. and. Been here ever since, and it was the best decision we ever made. We lived here longer than we've ever lived anywhere else. Uh, it's a small community, which I love. When I, we lived in New York City, we were only there for four years. When we lived in New York City, walking around the town, I ran into somebody I knew once. When you go to Harvest Market, it's a party <laughs> when you live here, and I much prefer that kind of lifestyle. And so does Marilyn. She's very gregarious. So. <laughs> so, what is it about Fort Bragg that you like so much? Oh, that's a long list. <laughs> First of all, I love the fact that it's a small town because there's you, you know everybody, and it, you know it's a community. And I think humans are tribal, and you, you know, for thousands of years we lived with small groups. So. I think we're better suited to do that in the big cities. Second of all, the climate is fantastic. Uh, people say, well, it's gray. I said, yeah, but the temperature during the winter is low in the 40s and high in the 50s. In the summer, it's the low in the 50s and the high in the 60s. That's very livable. <laughs> and so we enjoy that a whole lot. And then third, <coughs> it's so beautiful here. I mean, there's so much wildlife, just beauty is everywhere. I mean, as you know, I'm a photographer. I probably photograph of my landscape work and, and my uh, wildlife work. I shoot probably 70 or 80 percent of it right here on our property, which makes it pretty special. And then last, there's a lot of culture here. The Mendocino Theater Company, the film festival, the music festival, Gloriana, the Symphony of the Redwoods. There's just a lot of high quality entertainment here. And you don't have to go to New York. You don't have to pay $25 to park the car. It's probably more than that now. <laughs> uh, it's just a very comfortable lifestyle. So we love it here. So when did you discover your love for photography? Well, I started photography when I was about eight years old when we were camping at Convict Lake over in the east side of the Sierras. <clears throat> and a friend of our family had an Argus C3 uh, color slide camera. And he gave it to me, he says, there's a chipmunk here. See if you can get a picture of it. Well, I chased that poor chipmunk all <laughs> over the place. But the idea of capturing a picture really struck with me. And I said, this is great fun. But I was always kind of disappointed because film, I never got the image that I had in my mind. I take this picture and oh, that's going to be the greatest picture ever, and I get it back and it wasn't. <laughs> and so I always had it as a hobby, and we have tons of photos I've taken through our life as we travel around the world and lived a lot of places. But it was in 
about 2004, 2005, when digital cameras came along. And when I came up here, I did have a art. I did get into art. I was doing fine, uh, fine, furnish, fine furniture making. I went to the school, at, at the Kronoff School, at the College of the Redwoods, which it was then. And I took the summer classes, and for 10 years, I made my own fur made furniture, and I made stuff I never thought I would be able to do. And I was, it, was, it, was, it was exciting, especially when I was taking the classes, because I was working with other people around. But once I was working just by myself, I didn't find it a very satisfying art, because I was all by myself, you know, and I'm way too gregarious for that. And uh, I got tired of sawdust, and it takes forever to do a really fine piece. And at that time, digital photography came along, as I said, and I got an early digital camera, and it wasn't really good, very good one, but also Photoshop. And I started to get the idea, you know, with Photoshop, you can create and improve an image immensely. And when the good cameras finally did come along, I said, I love this. And so I turned professional at that time, not to make money, but to force myself to be a good photographer. Because <laughs> you don't want to say I'm a professional and you're turning out ugly pictures. So I, I self-taught mostly, but I took, I went to you could, a lot of classes, were some online, but usually um, Apple used to have a conference every year down in San Francisco. We'd always go down, and I'd take classes there. And, uh, there were classes at, at uh, Mendocino Art Center. In that fact, uh, I took a class there on portraiture and lighting from uh, a, a professional, professional modeling photographer. And, uh, and I looked at my pictures and I saw what other people were doing. I said, hmm, I can do this. So that's how I got into it. That's great. So back when you were in New York, what was your profession? Were you doing any photography then too? Um, almost not. I mean, <laughs> just recording events we went to or something, you know, the standard stand up in front of the camera and look where I am, you know. But, uh, I was oh, an I'm engineer and an executive at Colgate Palmolive. I was vice president of, of Global Systems, of the, the uh, electronic systems of the time there. And, and it was a big job, and they were in 120 different countries, so we traveled a lot. It was a very glamorous life. Uh, we saw wonderful things, we got involved in some of the things in New York City that were we never would have done if we hadn't lived there. It was a very exciting life, but it was basically a very unhealthy life. Mm -hmm. uh, we were traveling all the time, eating too much, uh, not getting good exercise. And, and I said, well, when we made the decision to come out here. Neither one of us had a difficulty of making that change. We had this wonderful experience, but we've traveled all over the country we lived in. We moved 21 times since we've been married. And uh, we're used to changing our environment. It doesn't bother us to do that. And we had great adventures everywhere, but we were ready to do something different. So here we are. <laughs> Beautiful place to settle down. Um, so your photography, you have done a variety of photography, all the way from the landscapes that we were talking about and the nature photography. You've done um, circus arts, you've gone to community theater. Um, what one of those would you say is your favorite to photograph? As I said, that's trying to pick, like trying to pick what your favorite child is. <laughs> uh, I enjoy all of them. I think I enjoy portraiture the most because I like bringing out people. Uh, I found that doing good portraiture has a big impact on the people I take their photographs. I did a book called Look at This for Beautiful Glamour Isn't Just for Hollywood. Hmm. I did that up here. And I went around and I saw women who I thought would be good glamour. Job. And I invited them to be in the book. And I think I only had two people who didn't want to do it. 
But almost all of them said, well, what do you want me? I'm not all that photogenic. To which I said, if I didn't think you're photogenic, I wouldn't, wouldn't have asked you. <laughs> so uh, I ended up photographing these 50 women and the impact on some of them was amazing. There was one woman who was living in an environment that, with a relationship that I think was pretty abusive. And she had no confidence in herself. And I took the photographs of her and I took her into my computer and I showed her the pictures. And she looked at them and she said, I'm beautiful. And after we finished the shoot, she says, can I come back? I want to do another shoot. Aww. And it changed her life. That's amazing. So, you know, when you have that kind of impact, it feels pretty good. Yeah. So that's probably why that's my favorite. Because uh, my goal, whenever I do portraits, I want it to be the best photograph you've ever had. That's my goal. So if I miss that, I didn't do the, best, <laughs> the right job. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, how many books have you done? Because I know you have the Glamour book. I probably what other done, ones do you have? I've probably done 60 books. Wow. I do wedding books. When we take a trip, I'll often record the book, the trip, and then I'll make it into a book. Uh, I've been, I've set, attended uh, family reunions and I photograph those and I make a book for that. Artists? Artists? Oh, and I've done three books on the artists of Mendocino Coast. And uh, they're, they're really historic because they capture who the artists were. In them. And the, the artists, it, it gives them recognition. And I always see my books around when artists are doing a show and they have their book there to show that, hey, I'm a real artist. You know? So are these books more for your personal collection, or do you actually have these books somewhere for others to Well, the artists of, Meta, uh, artists of Mendocino Coast, those three, I sold them to the artists. And artists bought most of them, and they would often give them, you know, when people yeah. bought a piece of their art, they, they'd give them a book. You know? yeah. And uh, I did another book called uh, The Saluna Chicks. Okay. And this, there's a saloon in San Francisco that was founded by my great-great-grandfather. It was called Wigner, Wagner Beer Hall back then. It's now called The Saloon. It's down in North Beach. And I won't go through the whole story, but I ended up camping out at the saloon on two different Sundays, and I photographed the women of the saloon. You know, it's, it's just street photography, basically. And uh, they're... Then the women, there are all sorts of women that hang out in that saloon from <laughs> executives to people who shouldn't be in the saloon. <laughs> they spent too much time in the saloon. But it was a great, that was a great, and I sold that. I wow. sold that book. Yeah. It's a really fun concept. Yeah. It's and especially with your history behind it, too. Yeah. That it makes was, it extra it, special. It was extra special, yes. So I asked you to show me a few photos. Um, examples of your work and I asked it to be your favorite ones and I know it was like picking a favorite child but um, you did send me some really incredible photos so could we talk about the first photo? Sure can. Uh, the first one you might know a little bit about I do a lot of photography for the theaters and everything and I shot this great show at Gloriana called Alice in Wonderland <laughs> and guess who the star was? <laughs> and, you know, I do a lot of photography for the, for the theaters, and, and they use it for publicity, and they put it in their programs and all that. And that's really great, because I get to meet, uh, first of all, working with Gloriana, I get to meet a lot of young people. And when you get to our age, you don't have a lot of young people in here <laughs> easily accessible, and that's, that's very important to us, so we enjoy that a bunch. And so that particular picture, I mean, you were great in that show, and it was, <laughs> and it was, uh, it was just a special photo. I have tons of special photos from those events, but that one's hanging on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> those events, I always loved your photography for because you really would go and capture whatever the character was, 
for that specific event. And I know you've done the same thing with a lot of the circus events. And um, I know we were talking the other day even about how one of your photos for the circus event actually became one of the circus's logos. Yes. Which yeah. is just a really cool, I guess, trivia thing on <laughs> what well, you've done. Well, you know, it's, it's rewarding when to create an image that somebody really values tremendously. It's something that'll live forever. So you know, it's kind of your immortality. <laughs> forever be sixteen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So your second photo. My second photo was a still life because it's fun to do still lives. You can capture. You know, those are real art compositions that you you set up yourself. And uh, the one I have in there is called Summer Harvest, and it has just the. It has the summer vegetables and tomatoes and peppers and, all, and a big slice of watermelon in the foreground. And the background is a silver vase that I bought in Turkey on one of my trips at the Grand Bazaar. And I just, I love capturing those kinds of things. Yeah, and how special to actually have one of your souvenirs from Turkey of all places. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know it's a good way again to pre create immortality. With it. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. The, my most famous picture is the picture of the blue whale that washed up on shore just about uh, 200 yards from our house here, maybe even not that. That was a very interesting event because our neighbor called over and said. I've got a big whale that's in the surf over here and it's bleeding and you might want to come over and get a picture of it. And actually Marilyn got the phone call and so she told me told me about it and about five seconds later I was over there taking the picture and the whale was just washing in the waves. It had been hit by a, uh, a, a some kind of research boat. Actually. The whale, I think, hit the boat, not the boat hit the whale, because the yeah. boat was only going about two or three knots, and the whale just surfaced underneath and hit the prop and severed its spine. It was, you know, all these terrible things. But, it, you know, everything has a silver lining, and that whale, I, I sent pictures of it down to the Press Democrat, and they sent me a note back to go get more photos. <laughs> So I folded it later in the afternoon and it washed into this very tiny lagoon right next to the point. But the tide was high and so this big whale was just washing back and forth in the, in the lagoon there. And then the next morning, Marilyn went over and took a look and she comes running back and says, Larry, get over there, you gotta see it. The tide was out, the whale was entirely exposed and they had a, a couple people from uh, Humboldt we're down there, the biologists measuring things, and our students and a professor. And the bluff is quite high above where where the uh, whale had washed in, and so he had this great perspective. And so I got this shot of this blue whale, full length, with people on it, and with the people on it, it gave real perspective how big this thing was. And I sent that down to uh, the Press Democrat, and that ended up on the cover of the, of the Press Democrat. But also what's interesting is once the Press Democrat had it, other people saw it. And I was getting phone calls all the time, can I use that picture on you know, different conservation sites and stuff, and I gave them all permission. And then we were gonna have to leave because we were going down for a reunion college reunion in Palo Alto and Marilyn said, you know, we might have put a message on our phone so that can contact us on our cell phone. Cell phones were pretty new at that time. But so that's a good idea, so we did. As we were driving down 101, just before we got into Santa Rosa, my phone rang and I picked up the phone and I looked at it and it said, AP on it. I said, Ooh. And it was Associated, Associated Press, and they uh, said, we'd like to use your picture. And 
you have the license to use it. And I said, will this make me rich or famous? And they said, famous. <laughs> <laughs> I think they did pay me three or three hundred dollars or something to use it. But that picture went all over the world. So that was, you know, that was a coup. I know we've had a few other whales that have washed up around here, but... But not that, I mean, not that colorful. Not that colorful and not in the perfect spot yeah, exactly, for you to be exactly. able to go and get such it, an incredible photo. It's funny, I didn't know what the whale was, and I called up a friend of mine, a biologist, and I said, there's a whale washed in here and it's huge. And I says, I don't know what kind of whale it is. And he says, what color is it? And I says, it's blue. He says, it's a blue whale. <laughs> If I said yellow, I'm not sure he would have said it was a yellow <laughs> whale. And the last picture I shared with you is, is a picture that's a collage of ocean. And it was done because uh, the uh, co-op gallery in, in uh, Mendocino has an exhibition every year they call it Crisis. The term Crisis means writing about art. And, but you can also do it, flip it, you know, you can, you can get writing and do a picture about the writing, and that's what I did. And I got this wonderful poem describing the ocean, and I thought, man, is that perfect? Mm -hmm. So then I pulled together all the different concepts of what our ocean is, well, from abalone shells to seagulls to, to Neptune. And I, I put this whole thing together and I put a faux frame around it, which is means I use Photoshop to simulate a frame and it looks very much like a real frame. And uh, I was really proud of that picture. That, was, that, was a, that felt like a real artistic effort. And that was another thing I liked to do. Where did you find the writing that you chose to? Oh, uh, they sent it to me. Of? You get it. The the arts the um, gallery gets submittals from the writing club, okay. and then you you don't know who it is who wrote it, and they just pick them arbitrarily and oh, send wow. you a copy, and then you have to figure out what to do with it. <laughs> Some, sometimes you get writing; it's a little hard to figure out how to do a photo of it. But this particular one was very easy. Well, that's amazing. It's a really cool concept. Yeah, it's very good. great fun. They do it every year. I got. I'm waiting to get my piece of writing for this year. Have you done it every year? I've done it for yeah. I've done it for three years, not three years straight. The, oh, the three years they've done it. Now this is the fourth year. Of course, they didn't do it during the uh, pandemic. Right. Everything was put on hold for that. Yeah, everything was put on hold. Exactly. Um. So, do you have any art? Um, in any of the museums around here or any shows that are coming up? Uh, yes, uh, I have art being shown at the Art Center right now. And they I have it, you know, they have it there all the time. So I always have some pieces there. And I just did a show at the Cobalt Gallery, which is a brand new gallery in Fort Bragg. And there's a new gallery that's opening up called Cloud Nine that uh, Margaret Franklin. Franklin. Uh, yeah, it's on Franklin. Mar Mar but Margaret, what's Margaret's last name? Margaret Paul. Margaret Paul started this new gallery and she has five or six artists in it, including herself. She's a silver artist. And she asked me if I would be in that gallery. And we have a contract for a year to be in that. So Amazing. That will be opening on first Friday of, of July. And that, I li really like that long commitment because then I can change my shows. Yeah, how do you decide on what you put in there for your shows? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, I will, I will always have a theme, you know, and it, it could be anything from street photography that I've done or, or buzzards or, you know, just whatever, so sunsets. I mean, the one, one I just did was at Cobalt with storms. Oh, wow. we, you know, we had great storms this last last year, and I had some really 
striking photos, if I don't say so myself, of the storms. Uh, so it'll be great fun doing that. Plus, uh, I will I will be starting a three-month show, I think in July, I have to get confirmation of it, at the Mendocino Savings Bank. And, uh, and I'll probably do a, a retrospective, some of my older photos, put in that one. I was also at the uh, at the bank when pandemic hit. I, in fact, I had just put my show up on the bank when they went into the pandemic. So I ended up having a three-year show because no, you know, nobody wanted to come in and change photos or any of that. So, <laughs> so that, that was kind of fun. Yeah. It was, it's a fun thing to be able to say. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So you know, pandemic's a benefit for some people, right? <laughs> So is there anything else you would like to add to what we've talked about? And oh, I was just, you know, everybody has an iPhone. The iPhones are great cameras. They're really excellent cameras. Now, I use it uh, quite a few times. I mean, I always have it with me and, and carrying a big camera around all the time is a nuisance. But I always have a camera. Marilyn always has a camera. And sometimes we can great shots. And I encourage everybody to learn how to use it and learn how to compose a picture well and make it interesting because it's a great way to create memories if nothing else. Do you have any tips for how to compose a good picture? Well, I could give you a whole lecture on that. <laughs> First of all, pick an interesting subject. You know, Cracked paint is not a really interesting subject. Some people will shoot pictures of cracked paint, but be sure it's an interesting subject. Be sure that the picture is about the subject. Watch out for distractions. Uh, you know, you don't want anything that takes your eye away from it. Uh, it works well if, you, if the brightest part of the picture is the center of interest. Do that. And what else? Those are probably the most important. And be sure it's balanced. Yeah. You know, I mean, the human mind has the ability to pick out a balanced picture. I mean, we all can look at a picture and say, that's not, you know, that it's just not a balanced picture. And there's no, you know, they, they have rules, but just trust your eye. And that, that's the key thing, is care about what you're taking a picture of. That's probably the most important thing. Some of you will just take a picture because they oh, I want to get that picture, and they're not composing at all. But just take the time to compose. It doesn't take long. And then enjoy the reward of doing a good photograph. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for coming on my show today. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our interview today with Larry Wagner. I hope we see you next time right here on Life on the Mendo Coast. Bye.